So given the what ways does the shift towards like data driven decision making impacted HR? Well, if you think about it, when you take the why away from a problem, right? If you don't really know, need to understand the basis of a recommendation, then you don't really need to kind of understand the domain as much, right? So in a way, it it decreases the importance of, let's say, centers of excellence or, or of, let's say, a learning expert or maybe even of a recruiter, because it might say, like, we don't even need your expertise anymore because we can mine from the data what people should be learning and we can mine from the data what type of candidate we should be approaching. And, and that type of expertise is, isn't as important as it might be in, in the past. That being said, right, the, the, the flip side of it is that for these kind of predictive tools to actually work, they need really good data to work on. And yeah. creating that really good data is really hard, right? It's actually not that hard to train a model or deploy a model. What's hard is to have good enough data that model is actually really going to work for you, right? Or he isn't have, even has valid predictions. So what this means is we need in HR people who can really define good solid processes that that really measure and capture the right information and do it so in a really consistent way. And only then can you really hope that these new fancy tools are really going to work for you. Because if your data is crap, you know, none of these tools really, really function effectively. So it basically means that uh, people in HR need to have a more techie mindset oftentimes, and perhaps need to be a bit more rigorous with regards to how processes need to be executed than was really necessary in the past. So it's more like evidence-based decision making. So it's, it's, what the data you get is more evidence-based. So then I guess it's more fairer for businesses to make decisions and also, I guess, minimizes biasness. Well, yeah, but I guess what I would say is you can't do evidence-based decision making without good evidence. And, mm -hmm. and having the discipline to create good evidence is tough, right? That, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to do. And therefore, we, we have to be mindful about how we do it, right? If, if you want to make decisions, for example, on who to hire, on what skills those people have in the system, then you better be damn sure that you've got their skills in the system, right? Do you mm -hmm. have their, all their skills in the system? You might have the skills you know about. But do you have all of them? Maybe, maybe not. Do you know what level of skill they have in the system? Like that, maybe they told you I have this skill, but do they really have that skill? Are they an expert in that skill? Are they not an expert in that skill? How do you measure their level of expertise in the skill? So, you know, automation is great, but of course it only depends on all of these pieces of information that you are somehow yeah. capturing and measuring to put in the system to, to, to make these decisions. And of course, if you aren't doing that right, then you're setting yourself up for unfair decisions. You're setting yourself up for, for bias and you know, potential lawsuits at the end of the day, if, you're not, yeah. if you don't have a proper basis for the decisions you're making.